So try not to get sucked in by the hype. It is that good, but you do need to listen and think carefully about whether this is going to fit into your workflow or not. You've maybe decided though you don't want another Android or another iOS LCD device in your life, then this e-ink tablets are the way for you for sure but maybe this is the way for you so if you don't want another android device if you don't want to go for the note 3c if you don't want to go for the books devices then this could be a really compelling device for you can i compare it to the size of moleskin yes i probably can i've got a moleskin uh, loitering around somewhere on these uh, things so yeah we'll try and do that um, today as well i would say it's a little bit bigger than your kind of ordinary pocket moleskin um, it's not quite as big as the sort of a5 moleskins that i'm used to right so so yeah as i say it is that good but think if it fits into your workflow for example to get the notes from this device into a place that you might want to organize them that is still a bit of a workaround so it's quite good that you you can sync it with your google drive so it can store all of its things into your own google drive or in the supernote cloud and well supernote cloud is very easy to access in there as well but I've gone ahead and linked it with my Google Drive. You can also link your Google Calendar and your Google Mail as well, or whatever mail server you use. And that what's great about it is they've made that so much easier to do. It used to be quite tricky to actually set up the email and the, the calendars. It used to be quite tricky to do that, in fact. Now they've made it just scanning a QR code on your phone and you click authorize and you're away. So the kind of whatever structure you have on the device is mirrored in the in the Google Drive. So that's really good. Keep them organized on the device and you find them organized wherever you are on your on your Google Drive. What happens then if you're simultaneously editing a file in both locations, you get a conflict file which uh, at least you don't accidentally lose work. But, you know, there is, my point here is that there is going to be some file version management that you're going to have to do because of this whole sync on demand nature of the cloud support. So the fact that it doesn't sync live, that's a good thing in one respect because you, you don't get it constantly pulling, pulling the Wi-Fi and constantly drain the battery there. It doesn't sync live. That's a good thing in one respect, but it means that you have to tell it when you want it to sync, and therefore you're having to think, oh, where have I made changes? You're not editing to the second like you might be on a, a, a a more connected device. Lasso gestures and erase. No, Kenzie, that seemed to work just fine for me. So the new erase gesture is just on the side there. So you can just erase that there like that, or circle around there. And the lasso, possibly the reason why, yeah, the lasso has worked just fine is it kind of like the two finger gesture, it kind of ignores anything which is in the shadow of where your hand would be. So try and place your fingers above where the pen is when you want to select. That's what I found to get those gestures to work. Merge conflicts are no issue if you keep separate copies or only edit from one place at a time. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think that's a major problem, Joseph. I just think that you need to be aware of that. It isn't like some, you know, you might be on a Microsoft. If I was, for instance, if I was working on the Microsoft app on the books device, then that would be live. The edits that I've seen, you would see them appear on a web app or in a, any instance of that file straight away so just be aware of that everything has come from the other the my previous super notes i don't particularly use the digest mode on here and generally that's because i've been shifting between other things over my time i do think that digest is an excellent thing on the super note devices as well so digest is here and any kind of reading notes you can just add these little parentheses around something you've been reading and it goes into your digests thing as well it should be there i've gone through and scanned the content that i've already made on the super note a6x2 and i've gone through and had a look through all the questions that people have been asking and um yeah we're going to check them out and i'm going to hopefully answer them for you today what about the screen right feel in the feel right to screen in the long run I like it very much. I don't know if you saw that I actually, the, the, my first impressions are a little like, hmm, not sure about this. I wasn't sure about the screen feel at first because a lot of people have said this in the comments as well. It does feel at first like it's almost like the pen is kind of sticking in and I can still kind of feel it up in this point where my hand's been less on it. But actually, no, now I've really got used to the screen feel, yeah. It does feel really good. It was a bit, a bit of a case of getting used to it, I think. It's become a bit coated in sort of hand grease, for want of a better word. I don't think it's kind of rubbed down at all. But I think that, yeah, after using it, the very first kind of strokes, we weren't sure. But actually now I absolutely love it. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the the old Sony DPT-1, which had this kind of like funny like gridded texture. It wasn't this kind of organic texture that we have now, but it, it was a kind of plastic kind of 
textured feeling and that feeling of the kind of pom nib going across there on the old Sony was excellent. So yeah, I think long run with answer that question. I think that's been the case from everyone I've heard. And they've found at first, like, oh, I'm not sure about this, especially if you've been used to the old screen feel. This is the A6X, the first one. And I really like that smooth feel. I have some points to make about that as well. I do think the clarity does take a hit on these highly textured screens. You know, you can hopefully just see that little bumpy texture in there, especially when the light above my head goes across it. Whereas the smoother one doesn't really have as much of that. And I think it actually looks clearer here on the older A6X. So there is a thing about the clarity with the new textured screen. And that's the case with all textured screens. I think you have to ask yourself. I think if you're writing mostly, then you want a textured screen feel. If you're using apps and things and reading mostly, you want a clear screen. So it's a, you know, a horses for courses thing. And I think maybe they could give you the option. Some other questions I've had is, does the drawing app have infinite canvas? It doesn't have infinite canvas. What it does have is the ability to pinch and zoom. So you could start really zoomed in. So that's, that's your range. Okay, so quite large. Yeah, you, you you could certainly write quite small on there and you could zoom quite out, uh, quite far out. I really like the new Atelier thing, but the um, Atelier app is really, really good. I've done a short on that so far and I've mentioned it in my seven great things so far about the A6X2. I will make some more in-depth content about using that. So I hope that answers that question. Is it still the best ink pad for writers? I thought this was a really interesting uh, point. Uh, this is a really interesting comment I had. It was about the whole Supernote kind of world, really, about uh, writing. And I really, really love the Supernote for writing. What I love about it are loads of things, just the screen feel. I love the whole feel of the device, and we've been comparing them to Moleskins in this so far. That's only got better. I love this, generally the accessories. And I love the real-time handwriting recognition. The fact that it's done the recognition just there for me already is excellent. I quite like the way that's integrated as well, because now oh, I didn't get it was a bit scruffy. So I'll just rewind and I'll, I'll just print that out a little bit. Now it should get it, I hope. Yeah, so it's got a screen feel now. It hasn't got accessories yet. But if you just take a little bit more care over it and you can kind of see... When you go back, you can see, oh, I didn't get that word, so I can have another go. And normally you get it in the sort of second go. I would say this is the best for writers for whom it's really important, the kind of textual kind of nature of their writing tools. If you're someone who loves pens, you know, like we were talking about this on our last live stream, that I'm big into my stationery. This is a brilliant pen by the Rotoring Rapid Pro. And I don't know if there are any users of that or if anyone's even interested in that because, come on, this is a this is about the A6X. Absolutely excellent pen, by the way. Great feel. You know, great writing feel. Great. But anyway, uh, back to the e-ink kit. <laughs> if you like pens, then you'll love the accessories and you'll love, for example, the Heart of Metal 2 pen. And I think this is this is the one to go for if you're... If you fall into that category of someone who just loves writing with nice stationery, that's you as a writer. This is the place to go. If you're a writer who travels, then the A6X2 is currently, I think, the best thing for you. I would say it's best for anyone who, yeah, the, if, if the feel of the writing, if you're someone who, when you write, you want to just love the way that whole process feels, then I would definitely go for it. But many writers, you have other priorities. You might have priorities, for instance, to get the copy that you're writing into the hands of the publishers really regularly, really quickly. Then I think maybe then the books platform is going to be better. For me, what I need to do with my writing is I need to be able to take notes as I go. And I need to, to do that via cloud platforms so that I can take them on any device, whatever computer I'm working on, my phone or my whichever e-ink tablet I'm using. And I need them to go into cloud platforms so I can organize them and publish them and use them later. So it's a bit tricky there. I don't think it quite suits me. And also my other kind of writing that I need to do is I need to be able to manage my professional documents on Microsoft cloud apps. And then the you know, the books, they, they're the superlative choice. They're the thing that you should really be thinking about for e-ink devices, for managing that. But if I had a personal project, if I was just wanting to write myself a book of poems or something or a short novel or short story or whatever, or just my own journal, that kind of writing, then I would still, I would really be leaning towards the super note right now. I would just love, I would, I mean, I would love to write that type of thing on the super note. It is that good. Is it still the best for writers? 
I don't know, but it's the best for some writers for sure. That's my answer to that one. Does it need a camera? People have asked, you know, does any of these devices, do they have cameras? And well, the cameras haven't been all that popular when they have come on the Tab Ultra. That's partly because of the way it's been integrated into the design rather than that. I just think, I don't think it's really that important on a device like this. I think if you were to do that, then you'd have a phone with you in any case. You could scan on that and you could upload to the Supernote Partner app or up to your Google Drive or something. You'd get a scanned document onto the device quite easily with another device. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about not having a, a camera. <laughs> this was quite good because on the box it says, the pen is mightier than the sword. And somebody, the comment somebody made was, it's not the pen that's mighty, it's the person who wields it. So I just thought that was really quite a good little statement. Just, just a good comment, it wasn't even a question. But um, yeah, I think it goes back to my thing really, doesn't it, about who should buy this or who, what type of writer is this for? It's the person who wields this device. They're, that, they're the mighty one. So if you're a writer, then think carefully about this device being a really good thing for you. Somebody asked, could you take off the protective layer? So if you didn't like that feel, maybe you could replace it with your own. And I think you certainly can take the protective layer off, but I just wouldn't recommend it really. And what I would say is that that's one of the selling points of this device. So if you don't want that screen feel, then perhaps you don't want this device. So perhaps you want something different. That, that's my kind of answer to that one. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Should Supernote maybe offer you the choice of different finishes? They're kind of saying this is the best and Wacom are obviously really invested in this type of screen because this is their proprietary screen and there's a Wacom trademark on the on their website on the feel right to feel. So maybe it could come on other devices, you never know. Bluetooth keyboard experience somebody's asked for as well. I did get it, managed to get it to pair. I don't know what was going on the first time I tried, but it should still be on at this point. So let's have a little look. I was a little bit disappointed. I'm not going to lie with it. It's only coming from the books and things like that. It is not really fast enough. It's not got any much better since I used it on the previous ones. So let's go into documents, open any documents. I don't know if this just needs to wake up, does it? It seems like it's pairing. Probably have to go back into pairing, do I? Settings, display and put. No, that's not the right one. My device, Bluetooth. So it's connected. Last open document. Not a great advert for its Bluetooth connection because it says it's connected. Am I really gonna have to go and do this again, am I? Probably am. Put it into pairing mode. Then it does work just fine. But yeah, it's, yeah, might be the key cron. It was working a little while ago. It's now not pairing, okay. So no, I'm, I can tell you as well, it's a little bit slow and sluggish. I'll capture that in my full review of the device, I'm sure. But you can see that's a bit, been a bit frustrating there, just straight away. I know that other people do and quite happily do that. Maybe there's something about the way the Keychron actually links with other devices that's not worked so well there. The last couple then, this was a big one. This is lots of people ask this quite understandably. Should I be waiting for the A5X2? If you're a heavy note user, I think maybe yes. I think maybe you should. But perhaps if you're an existing A5X user, then this isn't going out of fashion. This is still perfectly fine, this device. I'm gonna do a bit of a comparison, not with this so much, but with the older A6X, then I don't think you need to upgrade. They're not, they haven't made this device. You know, yes, they've made it beautiful. Yes, they've done all this wonderful job about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, great, great piece of design. Yeah, it's really desirable. It isn't a night and day difference. It isn't supposed to be a night and day difference. So if you're currently on one of the older Supernote devices, they are still working just fine. But if you have a larger device, maybe you have a larger books device, well, maybe you don't need the Tab Mini to go along with this. Maybe actually having this little writing companion just for you and your personal thoughts, maybe that's a really nice thing to do. So I think this is a device that sits as a great pair for other devices. If it's you're looking at your first one, I don't think this is a bad deal at all. It's roughly the same sort of price as the Tab Mini as well, Tab Mini C. So I think that there's, you know, it's a compelling choice for lots of people. But if you're looking for one that's just absolutely perfectly all about the notes, then I think maybe wait for the, the bigger one. Essentially, this will be the width of the bigger one. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, the screen fits in like that sort of size. So you'll be able to write much larger and you can see, well, now I'll just be able to fit much more in a line, I have much more space uh, to actually uh, work my notes. So 
Yeah, and it's quite nice that it's got that auto rotate now, which is a new feature on this newer generation of devices. And then lastly, but Kit, what can you do with your drawings? So one more thing about that, should I wait for the A5X2? Perhaps if you're a remarkable user and you're thinking about switching platforms, then maybe this would be a good shout to get you a toe in the water with Super. Because remarkable, where is that going? Well, I'm not entirely sure where the remarkable thing is going. What can you do with your drawing? Well, you can export them. So somebody asked, well, I've got my drawing here. What can I now do with it? What I can do is I can export it to a PNG and it sits in my exports file and that exports file will be uploaded to my Google Drive Cloud. And uh, here it is on the computer looking just as good as it does on there. I think it's probably, I've already, I did actually manage it just when I pressed that. So it's there now as a PNG. And I can set it as my screensaver. If I save it into my style or whatever, I've, I've got my lovely drawing there to do with as I please as a PNG. And it comes as a transparent PNG, incidentally. Yeah, A5 is better for that landscape trip. A bit smaller than ideal, yeah. A4X2 is rumored. So yeah, maybe actually the one, maybe it's buy an A6X2 and then also look forward to having a A4X2 as well. Can you use a screen protector? For Onyx books, for example, you can't buy them currently. I've never seen them sold anywhere that feel right to. But as I say, it's a whack on trademark, so uh, maybe they're going to bring them for other devices. I think that'd be cool if they did. Let's have a little look through. Yeah, the pogo pins on the back. If it's a keyboard, though, then it's going to be too small at this size, do you not think? We're not sure what these are. Any ideas, any rumors? It would be good to discuss what these pogo pins are here for. Maybe some kind of battery accessory, maybe. I don't think that's necessary. Battery life is quite good. No news on the date yet. I think it is and it isn't because they do sync across the whole Supernote platform. So whatever changes you make on one is going to be made on the other. So yeah, I think that's really cool as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be certainly a good pairing, a good combo. If money was no object, then maybe maybe we'd do that. Is the two touch signs what's the second one for? So this is your kind of home swipe like this. That kind of gets me back to my quick access menu at any point. But also upwards that does it's full screen refresh to get rid of any ghosting. This one is more about you hold it down and it brings you to the page menu and then you can swipe up and swipe down to move through the pages. That's quite a nice little gesture there as well. Also, when you're writing in the notes, I think it'll work in here as well. That becomes an eraser, two fingers on there as well. So, so some nice gestures really. I imagine that they'll change and customize those as they go. And incidentally, if you're left-handed, then you can choose just to have them switched. So this becomes your home and things like that. Is it possible to sideload? I'm wondering whether it's possible to sideload apps here on the Supernote and whether I'd recommend that or not. Uh, I will give it a go at some point. I'm, I'm almost certain. You imagine there probably is a way to get around and, and add your own APKs because that's essentially all they've done here. I'd also love to see the Atelier uh, APK on another e ink device as well because I do think that it's currently one of the best devices that you can, one of the best apps for drawing. Yeah, things like this, using digital text recognition is really cool. It's, it's, a, it's a company called MyScript uh, their, and their app is called ne Nebo or Nebu. Yeah, and I think the way they handle PDFs is really important for things like those, you know, very large documents, which can be essentially your file of facts, essentially your planner for the entire year. You know, you need to know that it's gonna handle PDFs really, really well.